puis voilà, le prochain point sur notre agenda, c'est ce qu'on appelle « innovation pitch », les pitchs d'innovation. Euh, comment introduire Vous tous, vous travaillez soit avec ou pour les centres d'innovation verte. Donc, euh, comme ça, vous savez aussi que dans les mois derniers, il y avait partout les analyses d'avancement des projets qui se sont passés. Une partie de ces analyses était aussi de regarder toutes les innovations différentes, presque une centaine, je pense, les innovations différentes dans les différents pays, dans les différentes chaînes de valeur, et de les analyser aussi par rapport à leur durabilité. Ça, c'est une chose qui a été faite. Et pour commencer maintenant, de voir quelles sont les innovations les plus durables ce sont selon l'appréciation euh, des équipes d'analyse, euh, on commence avec une, euh, avec une présentation d'une équipe du département technique euh, de la GIZ qui faisait partie de, cette, euh, qui de, de ces analyses. Et eux, ils vont nous d'abord présenter ce qu'ils ont fait pendant ces analyses-là. Et puis, deuxièmement, ils vont déjà faire une présélection des innovations que, selon eux, sont spécialement durables déjà. Donc, si possible, j'aimerais bien dire bonjour à... Ah, voilà, dire bonjour à Johanna et à Johannes, deux personnes ou deux collègues qui travaillent dans le département technique de la, de la GIZ. Bonjour à vous deux, c'est super que vous êtes là, la technique marche, bonjour Ok, donc c'est un plaisir, euh, je crois que c'est Johanna qui commence, c'est un plaisir, euh, de, nous sommes déjà très curieux ce que vous avez fait et aussi ce que vous avez trouvé comme résultat dans ces différentes analyses euh, d'avancement de projet par rapport à la durabilité de, des innovations. Johanna, s'il te plaît. Welcome from my side to the innovation pitch. I hope we can see the presentation soon. Um, today we would like to showcase the most um, sustainable innovations along the selected value chains of the Green Innovation Center. Um, the selection of the innovations is based, as you said, on the progress project analysis 2021. Most of you have been part of this exercise and know that we have only finalized the last country missions um, last week. So the raw data is uh, basically super fresh. I'm sure you are just as curious as we were to learn uh, which of the innovations are nominated. But uh, let me start, start with a brief background on how we selected the innovations and how um, sustainability was defined in the project progress analysis. So the um, PPA, a project project analysis, is a central monitoring and steering instrument of the Green Innovation Center. It has been conducted on a very regular basis since 2016. It evaluates and um, it evaluates and compares the status of implementation for its country packages. Thereby, it identifies key success factors that der and derives recommendations for its implementation. Um, each uh, each of the PPA missions has a bit of a, just has a changing focus. So, um, 2021, the focus was on sustainability of the country packages, but especially uh, sustainability of the innovations. Um, it, the, it was also a bit of a special uh, PPA since. Um, Due to the COVID situation, we could only do a remote PPA, but we had on-site consultant as basic eyes and ears of the mission. Um, yeah, so and it was carried out in 14 country packages. So also the data that we are looking into today is also only from 14 country packages. You have been discussing sustainability in your country packages in uh, sustainability in, in the World Cafe just now, and you have also looked into success factors, best and worst cases, lessons learned along the core dimensions. The PPA looked into the same five core dimensions of sustainability, economic, scalability, institutional, social, and environmental. Um, so uh, at the economic dimension, we were looking into financial and economic viability in the given local context as much as the level of independence, independence when it comes to implementation. So we checked whether there is a functioning user case and to which degree it is already running on its own. 
Um, at the environmental level, uh, um, we were looking into the availability and acknowledgement of risk assessment and uh, risk reducing options. So we analyzed to which degree the innovations are considering relevant environmental aspects. At uh, the level of the social dimensions, we were looking into the awareness of um, yeah, awareness of given risks of the selected innovations and respectively the same uh, whether they are risk reducing options for gender conflict and so on. Um, at the level of institutional sustainability, the PPA analyzed whether the innovations are integrated into national plans, strategies, um, if capacities have been strengthened to take up the innovations and if uh, favorable framework conditions were promoted. Scalability, I think you called it in the world cafes, you called it political level. Um, here it was observed or analyzed whether the innovations that were selected can be scaled and if so, to what degree this has already happened. Obviously, we have noted to which degree the impact, there is already impact of these activities. So this is about the dimensions of sustainability, but let us have a look into the results. Basically, this pitch is, or um, well, let me add, this pitch is also a starting point for us at the sectoral department um, to analyze success factors of innovations promoted by GIZ in general, not only for Green Innovation Center, but in the agriculture sector along value chain development project projects. This means we will analyze different projects, um, Green Innovation Center being one of those, and distill the most successful criteria in terms of sustainability. We plan to present those results by mid of next year. For now, uh, let us only have a look at the data of the Green Innovation Center, which you can see here. In the PPA 2021, we had a total of 85 innovations. Nine innovations were input-based. 18 innovations are either technical or organizational. And most of them, 33, are knowledge-based. Out of this 85, we have taken eight innovations that we would like to pitch today. And um, they, these eight innovations had the highest score um, in, uh, in all dimensions. They had the highest score in all dimension, dimensions. And um, we also had further criteria, which was uh, only one innovation per country package was um, allowed to be nominated. And each innovation was only allowed to be nominated once so that we would not have GAP or FBS or whatever five times in five different countries. So this is the background for our pitch. And um, I would continue now to present uh, the innovations. Is that? OK. Donc, donc je suis où nous sommes, je crois, tout le monde est super curieux de voir quelles huit innovations vous avez choisies parmi les plus que, ou presque une centaine d'innovations que vous avez analysées. Donc, Johanna, euh, vous allez nous présenter les premiers quatre innovations choisies, c'est ça, maintenant Ok, allez-y. Yeah. Ok. Um, the picture is done. Okay, um, we'll start with the art row Caesar in Ethiopia. The technical innovation was identified at the Green Innovation Slam 2018. It was developed by a farmer in Aussie Zone to support farmers in sowing, mainly cereals and rows. Compared to manual row seeding, the art significantly reduces time and costs. Currently, about 500 art are in use. A clear business plan is available and cross-margin analysis has been undertaken by the local university. Since the innovation only involves few costs, it is especially attractive for poorer farmers. Art helps loosen the soil, increases it in its infiltration by water, and it stimulates billowing. These and other properties contribute to agrobiodiversity, whilst the farmer is set to obtain better yields. Through the establishment of the art manufactory, decentralized jobs were created, especially for young people. The joint effort among farmers strengthened the social cohesion. The innovation is widely um, accepted and recognized by stakeholders, such as the Ministry of Agriculture. At the extension offices, the art is used for demonstration purposes, noticing a high demand and acceptance amongst farmers. In the future, the art will be distributed through the farm service centers. Further, the patenting process is ongoing, as much as the integration into national strategies. If 
you've been if you think ROC that should win and you're convinced, you should vote number one ROC down after this presentation. The next presentation, the next innovation, number two, is coming from Nigeria, from the value chain mice maize. It's the good agricultural practices. It's a knowledge-based innovation. GAP is a knowledge-based innovation implemented in eight country packages. In Nigeria, its implementation is a real success story. Within the maize supply chain, it generally refers to more suitable site-specific production techniques. Depending on the particular collocation and tailor-made to the target group, a variety of practices can be offered. The most prominent are appropriate variety selection, soil fertility management, enhancement of organic matter content, crop rotation, controlled weed and pest control, fertilization and the feasible irrigation. The general objective is to achieve a climate smart production, which at the same time is economically feasible. Also, technical interve interventions in the production process, such as the use of simple and appropriate mechanization tools, are having a positive effect on the overall crop yield. In combination with suitable post-harvest technologies, which help reducing waste, an increase in overall income can be achieved. Eventually, farmers confirm improved yields. They are financially better off and conduct trainings independently, as they clearly see the benefits. The GAP training programs have a high priority and a high level of ownership by the governmental agricultural support services. It is hands well anchored in the national strategies. This ensures continuous support even beyond the project's duration. So this is our innovation number two coming from Nigeria, good agricultural practices. If you are convinced, please vote for this innovation. Um, okay, now we are coming to the next innovation, the third one from Mozambique, value chain Baobab, and it's about the development of innovative products and new markets. The innovation tells the story how a truly sustainable approach is going in line with the world beauty gender approach. Baobab as a native non-timber forest product is traditionally well known by the local communities and helps as an innovation for exclusively women in rural areas to address income generating activities. Local collection in a sustainable manner, processing and trading provides dearly needed income through an abundantly available resource, legally accessible by rural women especially through the collaboration with the private sector, which ensures a constant and fair market access, scalability options for animal feed and handicrafts offers, offer promising opportunities. Moreover, the value chain activities contribute to the adaptation and climate change consequences. A well-established export market for the produce already exists. The local market still has capacities to take up more which by using a direct market system in combination with the promotion of processing and local consumption creates attractive economic benefits for participating farmers, especially women. This is our innovation number three, development of innovative products and new markets in Mozambique. Um, it's an organizational innovation as you have seen and heard. And if you're convinced that this innovation should be should be the innovation, then you should vote number three, development of innovative products and markets in Mozambique. So we have two more. Il faut uh, veiller un peu le temps si je peux interrompre. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, this actually, okay. I think we can't stop the presentation because it's mm -hmm. running by itself. Okay. So, um, <laughs> We are basically stuck to the time that is given, okay? Um, I'll try to, um, to go through it as fast. Okay. Innovation number four comes from Cameroon. It's from the value chain poultry. It's about the village-based veterinary service centers and it's an organizational um, innovation. In Cameroon, the poultry sector records 70% of its annual losses due to the Newcastle disease. Poultry farmers in rural areas do not have any access to basic veterinary services. 
To ensure the vaccination of village chickens against this disease, 20 animal health um, development centers were set up in partnership with the Green Innovation Center Cameroon, the Ministry of Livestock, and a private uh, supplier of animal health products. The centers organize vaccination campaigns by village vaccinators. Their services and veterinary products are paid by the farmers. From 2017 to 19, more than a half of a million village chickens were vaccinated. After an interruption due to Corona, vaccination campaigns were restarted in 2021. The innovation makes an important contribution to the improvement of traditional poultry farming, particularly benefiting uh, women producers. Jobs are created in the centers as veterinary assistants and in villages as village vaccinators. The center has proven the economic viability, not least due to sale of veterinary products, also for other livestock and pets. The transformation of the centers into legalized veterinary cabinets is ongoing. Together with its partners, the project is working on upscaling uh, strategies. A World Bank project has already adopted the innovation concept and 10 more village-based veterinary services will be established in collaboration with the project. This is innovation number four. If you are convinced that this one should win, you should vote on number four, village-based veterinary services in Cameroon. I'm sorry, I can't speed up because it's um, automatic ongoing, basically, the, the presentation. But now, this was number four. Jumping to number five, the system of rice intensification plus mechanization in Mali, value chain rice. It's a knowledge-based innovation. The SRI is a sustainable method of intensive rice cultivation. It combines good agricultural practices on rice with a strong environmental focus. The Green Innovation Centre Mali promotes SRI in combination with tailored mechanization solutions and services. Until now, the Green Innovation Center and its partner trained 45,000 rice farmers in SRI. About 30% of them are women. These SRI trained farmers could almost double their incomes in the last five years. Where possible, uh, where possible alternation of rice cultivation with vegetable cultivation in dry seasons is implemented. This provides additional income for women. The innovation is economically viable as productivity is increased and relatively low costs. Its economic viability has been confirmed by the uptake of the private sector in Mali. By now, several private sector actors implement the innovation with our project support. SRI plus mechanization is climate friendly as it leads to a reduction of inputs such as water and fertilizers and propagates the use of organic fertilizer. SRI plus mechanization increases the attractiveness of agriculture for young people who find employment possibilities in micro-enterprises or service providers. The innovation is on a good path towards institutionalization. It, standardized, it is described, it has standards, it can be implemented independently by project partners. Financing products flanking the innovation have also been developed. So if you are convinced that SRI plus mechanization from Mali should win, win you should vote for innovation number five. And this was the last innovation I would present and I would give back to the studio. On peut passer la parole à Johannes. Merci. Okay, thank you. So I'll take it up from our sixth uh, innovation. And as you can see on the presentation, it's the innovative training in the dairy value chain uh, from Tunisia. Um, in French, the name is Formation Innovante dans la filière lait. And um, the innovative training in the dairy value chain, short fill, um, is a comprehensive training package successfully implemented in Tunisia since October 2018. And since then, more than 3,000 uh, producers have already been trained. Um, the training package follows adult education principles and links theory and practice. Um, which makes it uh, particularly suited uh, to improve small dairy farmers' production practices. By holding the trainings close to the farmers' locations, um, Phil has enabled a significant number of women to take part. 64% of the persons trained uh, are indeed women. 
Um, Phil currently consists of eight training modules, um, and these cover good practices in dairy farming, such as basic, basic hygiene, animal nutrition, fodder production, animal health, or breeding. And um, on the other hand, um, Phil is delivered in combination with a proven farmer business school approach, which covers topics such as financial literacy, entrepreneurial spirit, and strategic economic decision making. And um, as a result, uh, field trained farmers have begun considering their milk production as a business and um, were able to increase their income by um, 51%. Phil is already offered by Tunisian uh, dairy factory factories independently, independently of any project funding. And further developments, developments are in the pipeline, such as adding training modules. Um, as well as use um, uh, in facilitating farmers' access to government support to milk cooling systems. And if you are convinced by our sixth uh, innovation, the Formation Innovante Le, Innovative Training in the Dairy Value Chain, then please vote for it after the presentation. With that, we come to the seventh um, innovation. The seventh innovation is ethical rooted cutting technology from India and is applied in the potato value chain. It's an organizational innovation. India is um, the world's second largest uh, producer of potato and Indian potato seed production area is currently concentrated in one of its far northwestern parts um, of the huge country. And um, this uh, centralized, uh, centralized uh, potato seed production system um, is, a huge, uh, is a huge obstacle um, as, in, as it involves um, high cost and is problematic for seed quality due to uh, transportation. Um, the apical root decutting technology, short ARC, holds great potential to help overcome these challenges. Um, ARC was developed and tested by the International Potato Center in Vietnam and Kenya before. Um, and it involves uh, three major steps that can be applied by trained farmers or farm organizations. Um, these are tissue culture, production of cuttings and production of seeds. And um, becoming seed producers themselves, um, ARC can render trained farmers and farmer organizations independent from seed traders. And putting such a decentralized seed potato production system on an economically viable basis, um, the project um, Green Innovation Center India, together with its partners, is currently working on viable business models for uh, farmer organizations. A uh, decentralized um, production system means reduced cost of seeds um, uh, due to minimized uh, transportation um, and facilitates smallholders access to quality seeds um, at the same time. In the current uh, rainy season, one million seeds have already been produced and um, planted. Um, the state government of the potato producing Indian states are highly interested in ARC and currently involved in its um, dissemination. So if you are um, convinced by our seventh uh, innovation by apical rooted, rooted cutting ARC, then please for, um, vote for it after the presentation. And with this, we come to innovation number eight, last but not least, um, the SME loop from Benin, um, which is applied in the rice value chain and it's an organizational innovation. Um, in total, um, SME loop is implemented in seven green innovation center um, country packages. Um, in Benin, the innovation was introduced in 2015. Um, by applying an interactive approach of training and then coaching, the SME loop uh, strengthens managers and uh, small enterprises to make their business more inclusive and um, more competitive at the same time. In Benin alone, um, this has led to the creation of 2,750 new full-time jobs since um, the introduction in 2015. Uh, and more uh, than half of these uh, were for uh, young people. 
Uh, moreover, a revenue increase by 143% uh, and much easier access to credit for the SMEs was achieved, especially for women. Um, in Benin, the SME loop has overcome first of obstacle, um, obstacles of institutional anchoring. Uh, one can say that there is great demand uh, for the SME loop from several projects uh, all over the world. And the Regional Competence Center for Employment Promotion, established, established by the project and its partner ministry, is GIZ's central point of contact for the dissemination of the tool. There is a whole library of documents um, available, uh, including manuals, training materials um, that can facilitate the uptake of SME Loop in other um, countries and other projects. Um, the SME Loop has, has raised a co-financing in Benin as well as in Burkina Faso um, and by now has been taken up in 10 other countries. Um, in Benin, the SME loop is uh, to be used nationwide with the Ministry of Agriculture, Husbandry and Fishery and part of the National Strategy of Agricultural Extension. With that, we are at the end. Hope you are convinced by Innovation 8. If so, please vote for it after the presentation. Here you see the overview of all innovations, but on that our moderator will explain further.